Take all the glory Take all the praise I I will exalt you I will exalt you I will exalt you You are my God I will exalt you I will exalt you I will exalt you You are my God Where is it? I will exalt I will exalt you I will exalt you You are my God Yeah, one more time, yes I will exalt you We Exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to Believers Family Worship Center's Midweek Bible Study. We'd like to welcome you for joining us. Uh, my name is Elder Roxanne Martin, and here's my husband, Elder Bobby Martin, and we will be facilitating this week's Bible study. We'd like to thank all of you online for joining us. You've landed on Believers Family Worship Center's uh, uh, either live feed for a uh, Bible study, for Facebook, for YouTube. We'd like to thank you for joining us. You can find more information about our church at believersfamily.org. Of course, if you're with us, you know you're with us for midweek Bible study. But in addition to this midweek Bible study, you can join us during the week, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. for morning prayer to get your day started. On Monday evenings at 7 p.m., you can join us for one hour of prayer. And of course, on Sundays at 10 a.m., you can join us for our worship center services and is the greatest worship worship and word on this side of heaven. So we'd like to thank you all again for joining us. And this evening as we study, we're going to have conversations, but we're also going to be sharing with you on member benefits. Amen. And when it comes to men member benefits, what our focus is going to be on how the church is relevant. We know that some people may describe or think of church as just a place you go once a week or however often you go. But the church has a very vital role and what we do as church members is important. And uh, we're going to talk about member benefits. We're going to talk about a few things in addition to member benefits. We're going to talk about uh, what is a good church member? What's the benefits of membership? And we're going to also wrap up with the body of Christ as, as, as God took the church to him as a bride. So we're going to go first of all to the Father in prayer before we get started. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you, Lord God, 
for giving us the ability to come, Lord God, together to study your word, Lord God. We thank you for being such a good God, Lord God. Before we ask anything, Lord God, we give you praise. We give you worship for who you are, for what you have done, for how important you are in our lives, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for us having the ability to go about our day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your protection. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord yes. God. So as we come together studying your word, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that this time of fellowship, Lord God, will spur us on, Lord God, to know how it is, Lord God, and have a more understanding of the relevance of the church, Lord God, and more also, Lord God, to we can uplift each other, Lord God, as members, Lord God, in the body of Christ. So we call this time sanctified. We call this time holy. We call this time blessed. And we thank you, Lord God, that we your word goes forth it's not going to return into your void it's going to go where you send it and we thank you Lord God that is landing on good ground and that the seed is going to be planted and we thank you Lord God your word says one water plant one water and you give the increase so we thank you Lord God that there will be an increase of your word Lord God after this study and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray we say amen and amen, amen. amen. And again, I'm Elder Roxanne. This is my husband, Elder Bobby. And before we get started, uh, I'm going to ask Bobby if he can read a scripture for us that comes from Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 24th through the 25th verse. If you can go ahead and read that for us. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much more, as ye see the day approaching. Okay, so I'd like to thank him for reading that scripture. And when it comes to Bible study, just to give some little tips, you know, there are different versions. If you have a, a Bible, you might have a Bible that has more than one translation or on the apps on your phones. We can always check another translation. And one thing that I always do, I go to another translation. So what I'm going to do is read this version of this scripture, but I'm going to do it in the NIV, then the contemporary English version, it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. In the contemporary English version, it says, we should keep encouraging, on encouraging each other to be thoughtful and to do helpful things. Some people have given up on the habit of meeting for worship, but we must not do that. We should keep on encouraging each other, especially since that you know that the day of the Lord's coming is getting closer. So what we want to talk about, and we've heard the scripture before, and I want to set the context in, when we, in which we're going to study this. It's talking about the relevance of the church. I know we live in a day and a time, Bobby, to where we've gotten so technology driven that it's gotten to the point that we have the advantages of having the word of God and the gospel spread because that's what we're supposed to do. We're to spread the gospel. But one thing that we want to make sure in this day and age we live in, we want to relate to you and expound that the church is still relevant. Coming to church, worshiping corporately, uh, serving God, giving is just as important as it is now than ever. We know that as of late, uh, things have changed in our world to where, you know, there's the opportunity for some of us to join church and join and have online members. And we thank God for our online members. We thank God for those who are not, who are unable to come to the house of God, whether it be through a health challenge, whether it be because of their work schedule or rather it be that they still worship with us but they live in another area but what we don't want to do is forget that it's very important that we come together and we assemble together in worship with the church and we support and do everything that we need because God has ordained the church he's ordained the church to carry out his purpose and the church has a vital role so when I talk about member benefits, what we're talking about is church membership. 
And it's in church is more than just a place to go. It's an important place that we need to be and exist. And uh, there are benefits of being involved in attending a local church. There are benefits involved in coming together and corporately uh, worshiping. And I know you probably can expound on this a little. I'll give an example of something with member benefits. Uh, everybody knows Amazon. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Prime member, mm -hmm. uh, usually Prime members can get things, what, uh, shipped? Uh, two days. Two days. You pay uh, a membership fee. You can also fee. pay overnight. You can, uh, pay, you can ex expedite uh, right the now shipping. Right it's according to the amount of days that you... Right, the number shown. of days you want it. So with Amazon, there's benefits. So in addition to the two-day shipping with Amazon, instead of going to the store or driving to a mall that may not be in your area, you can go online. Mm -hmm. You can, because of being a member, you have the uh, assurance of ordering getting it at discounted rates then you can get in the store you can get it shipped two days but there's some also benefits that some people don't take advantage of that i do there's a uh, prime video mm -hmm. it's a streaming mm -hmm. service and it comes mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. your membership there's prime music i stream gospel music all the time in different singers all the time but i can't partake of those benefits if i'm not a member yes that's it uh, another example is uh, Chick-fil-A. Hmm. I'm a signature member. That means I have a membership, but I have that signature membership because I have a relationship with them. I frequent them often. Mm -hmm. I get free items. I get free foods. I get free deliveries at home at times, but that's only because I've gotten that relationship. I do invest and have an exchange with them. But I have that so I can get some free things every now and then. Sam's Club mm -hmm. is another one. Mm -hmm. You have membership, but then sometimes they try to get you to get the Advantage membership. You know, you can order, you can have your things uh, put in your car. You don't have to walk around the store. So what I'm saying is I'm giving an example of something with benefits. And that's, that's, that's a good thing uh, with things with benefits because most companies... Mm -hmm. uh, they center around convenience. You know, it's a lot easier for you to call in mm -hmm. and just arrive quickly and get what you need mm -hmm. or, or deliver. Right. And that's a good thing, but let's relate that to the church. Right. Um, you're talking about knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Internet, uh, all of these things that you can receive knowledge uh, throughout all the Internet in, in different ways, of not leaving the home. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it relates to the church, you can have a whole lot of knowledge. But where do you go to get the understanding when you have that knowledge and you really don't understand? Who's going to explain to you? Because explaining comes to knowledge. That's why, the, 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 that's why God says, are people fail for the lack of knowledge? Right. Because where do you get that knowledge from? Okay, you got the knowledge. Where do you go to get the understanding? Mm -hmm. And that's where the church come in. Mm -hmm. The church accommodates the person, the family, to get a better understanding mm -hmm. of all that knowledge that you have received. Mm -hmm. Remember, the ear mm -hmm. hears it all. Right. But it takes the ear to take it in. Mm -hmm. You take the knowledge in, but now you have to comprehend. Right. So now it becomes understanding. Right. So and that's why you say our people fear for lack of knowledge. So... As a benefit of being in a local body, we have the benefits of being able to reach out and communicate with a pastor or an elder or a teacher or a deacon who can help further expound some things that we do. And that is one of the benefits. And when it comes to the church and God ordaining the church, uh, he's ordained the church to carry out uh, his purpose. Uh, and the church is very vital in our growth. That's why I like what you said is that we're not here tonight hating on those who have chosen not to become a member of a local body. That's not what we're here about. What we're here about is to reset and go back to some foundations to understand that, yes, 
if it's my only way of communicating and, and getting connected with the church, I love having online church, but we want to explain one of some of those benefits of corporately coming together and being under the leadership of someone that can help teach you, that can give that wisdom, that can further expound that information is out there. Uh, in, in doing some studying, and I know some of you may know this, is that there's been some articles of late that have been written, and especially since COVID hit. Uh, and these are some stats that I wanted to give you that was from a particular article that was read. L the largest Christian groups report membership declines, and that was in 2021. Membership of the top 25 churches, meaning denominational churches, were down uh, 0. 49%, like a half a percent from the previous year's total. And in that article, they were trying to, the article didn't explain why, but one thing that they've gotten from these surveyors is that uh, there's a need to study why churchgoers, especially those that are of younger ages, 20s, 30s, and 40s, they may attend a church, but they'll resist joining. And then there were other articles on why the U.S. church is in decline, uh, and we know what happened with COVID. When COVID hit, we had to go online. We weren't able to meet, and we thank God for being able to give the technology, and we've been able to jump off and expand from that with, with that knowledge. But what has happened is we found that some people who were faithfully coming, taking part, giving, uh, uh, being generous, being helpful, uh, since COVID, it's even declined even more so to where coming back to church is almost like, well, it's almost like a thing of convenience. So what we want to get to is that we want to get back to the relevance of the church. We do not want to have it to the point to where we're able in our body uh, and able to have and be part of a membership because guess what? Just as important as a pastor, a bishop, a teacher, a leader, a worship singer is, members are just as important. In Ephesians 5, it talks about the body, how the body can't say the eye, I don't have need of the foot, I don't have need of this. So the church has need of the members. In the Old Testament, a couple of years ago, a prophet has assigned me to do a study of the tabernacle. And in that tabernacle study, when Moses was directed by God to, uh, to, to build a tabernacle, he gave specific instructions, and he wanted the tabernacle dwelling in the midst, in the middle of all the encampments, of all the tribes. If you're a studier, you know, you can look online and see where the tabernacle was. It was in the center. It was in the center for a purpose. It was in the center because that's the place where everyone would go to give sacrifice. They would go to worship. And they, when they would leave, they would take back from what they got to go back into their lives. In the New Testament church, after the day of Pentecost when the church started, uh, we know that the Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. He commissioned the church to come together. The church members, they grew. They fellowshiped with one another. They were with each other. They supported. There was nothing that was missing. There was nothing that was broken. So today we want to get back to why is there such a, a lack of reverence as it was in the past to church. And when it comes to a great fall in a way, you have anything to expound on that on today with maybe some of those reasons why there might be a fall in a way? Well, you have to look at it this way. Okay, uh, we have a younger generation now. Mm -hmm. We have a younger generation of grandmas, uh, which was not back in the days. Mm -hmm. In the days, it was the grandmother and the great, grand, the great grandmother and grandfather that prayed, that passed on the word to their children. Mm -hmm. And from that, from their children, it passed on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Well, if you notice right now, there's a gap. Mm -hmm. And that gap that has happened is now is because you have a young grandma and a grandpa. Uh, and they may not even be over the age 35, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Back then, grandma was much older. Mm -hmm. So today, if there's a break between that grandma from the previous grandma that did not receive, which God says, train the child, uh -huh. teach them the word, bring them in the presence of the house that they, are, they may learn mm -hmm. and grow. Well, in between the generation, a gap changing, 
in some families there was a gap. Mm -hmm. So if someone did not import that, that uh, lineage or that inheritance, which is the word of God, mm -hmm. Uh, to them, then they didn't wasn't equipped to pass it on to their grandchildren. Right. So then that's where the gap come in. Right, and we, we, we see that there's a generation gap. And we understand and know that as generation, as times change, we do need to adapt. We do need to change. But we also do need that foundation of understanding why it's important. When God instructed Moses to build that tabernacle in the center, it was not only, uh, uh, it, it was to make them understand that everything that God is, the essence of who God is, it needs to be the central focus of the family. So the tabernacle itself where they went to worship represented that centralized place after all the work was done, after everyone went to work, after everybody did everything, you would go to that central place and worship and that's what the church is. I tell you what, I don't know about others, but I look forward to coming to the house of God. It says in the book of Psalms, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God because the church that we have today, not only the physical body, but the collective church is a place where after we leave the cares of the world that we've had for the week, after we leave what we've done at work, after we leave what was done at home or whatever we do, we can go to that place. We can go to the church to offer a sacrifice. Sometimes we offer a sacrifice of praise. You know, it might have been rough, but we're going to give God what's due to him. So we have to remember and put things back into perspective that, yes, there has been a divide. There has been a gap in some generations to where we have a younger generation that are raising children, a younger generation that are seeing themselves faced as parents or grandparents. But if we do not teach them the importance of the church, coming to a church why do we go to church why do we learn from church what do we get from it the future of our church is going to be our youth right and that's exactly what's going on right now because you have a lot of church doors are closing because there's no youth uh growth there's no youth to pass on the ministry to pass on the uh the teaching of the fivefold ministry you're and exactly right those things are so important but if you go back uh biblically uh, to J Jacob, Jacob, 12 sons. Mm -hmm. Each son was responsible for his family. Right. Even though, no, they all wasn't great. They all right. wasn't uh, perfect. perfect. Right. They had all issues. If you exactly. go back and you read Jacob's, every, each and one of his sons, how things started, how things end, but yet they still was responsible for their family. And that's why we need to get uh, the younger generation back because what they need to realize is whatever you do in life when you dis make a decision to have a family, mm -hmm. to have kids and as a, a, a husband and a wife you become that leadership, that authority figure. Right. So it's your responsibility to carry the word of God to your kids. That's why you say train them because when the kids come into this world, they know nothing. Mm -hmm. So if so, that's why we need to make the home, the family, as most important. And that's why the enemy attacking the family now. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly why he's attacking the family because the church is made up of families. So if we attack the family. Mm -hmm. If we break up the family, mm -hmm. if we get it to where the family is going to start prioritizing some other things, well, you know, I'm going to just be honest and I'm just going to say it. Once in time, and I, and I want you to expound on that because I learned a lot from what you told me that Mama and Papa, when they were living, what they instilled in you as a young person. But it, it, was, it's, it was no such thing in our house of not going to church on Sunday. Oh, now, no. once you got past 18 and you were on your own, that was one thing. But we were taught that. We didn't understand and we may not have been in the knowledge of God as we know now to understand spiritual mm -hmm. things. But there were some seeds that were planted. Because when we were brought to church, even as young children, mm -hmm. we were able to take part in what? Vacation Bible school, mm -hmm. Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I remember going to youth encampment. Uh -huh. uh, I remember learning of 
uh, uh, the creation, learning of David, learning about Daniel, learning about uh, 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 David, uh, learning about. So we have to understand that a crucial, critical part is of families. We have, there may be that generation gap. And, and you know what? It's not only generation because the, the Bible says in the last days there's going to be a falling away. And yeah. it's more than just young people, but young people are led by older adults. But there are some adults that have gotten by the wayside and said, oh, I can ter take church or leave it. You know, uh, I can get online. I can find any church. Yeah, you can find any church, but let me ask you this. Will any church for some of those family foundational things, when the... When, Will anybody just baptize your child? No. Will anyone just christen or bless your, bless your child, depending upon what religion or, or, or what denomination you're in? Will, when it's time to get married, I don't know if this is online, but have you ever heard of someone getting married online? No, you need an officiant, usually <laughs> a pastor or a civil person to do it. And these days, you're not even seeing that many marriages being taken place in church anymore. They're doing it at event centers, and that's all good. Another thing, you, to you, bury you. You know, that, you know that's, that's, that's something you said about uh, marriages. Mm -hmm. And just to show you how marriage are much, are much less more important than a driver's license. Hmm. And the reason I say that is, when you go to get a driver's license, mm -hmm. first you have to take a class. Yes. Right? Yes. Without the class, you can't even no. get to the first step. No. That's the first step is right. get a class. These right. days, you got to pay right. and drive around for a while. You do. Then, you go in, you got to get tests. You got to yes, take a test. Do. Yes. Then once you take a test, they make you take another driver's test. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is throw this in. Why do you think they check your eyes? Oh, they oh, you have to make sure you can see. My glasses are over there. I can see close. Okay. Far. So here's the thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Without those things, right. you can't have you can't get your license. Wow. So let's talk about marriage. Okay, I see where you're going. You can go to the courthouse mm -hmm. when you just decide you're gonna get married. Right. Sign the paper. Mm. Go before whoever. Uh oh. And it's done. Uh oh. But. But. Church. Church. Okay. Counseling. Premarital counseling. Because let's be real about it. Mm -hmm. Real talk. Yes. If you actually seek counseling, mm -hmm. let's be real. Mm -hmm. If you seek it, let's say the stipulation was six months of counseling, mm -hmm. you might not marry that, that, that fellow or that, or, or that sister. <laughs> Right, and then you, you know what I'm saying. I'm I just saying, you. let's do real talk. Uh, right, and then I will be able to be shown some things that I may not realize about, and that's the benefit of having a bishop, a pastor, uh, uh, assistant pastors, and elders who can help. Because the benefit of having church membership is that I can get married under my covering, but my, by my covering who has, they're living a life that are exemplary before me, and I can trust that what they are imparting in those premarital courses will set me up for success in my marriage. And I'm glad you said that because okay. think about this. That's why it's so important when you say knowledge, mm -hmm. understanding, you're getting understanding of each other. Right. Constant understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. But once you get that, that understanding, where do you get the wisdom from? Oh, right. You need a man of God. You need a covenant. Come on. You need a church. You see, you can't skip the two right. to get to the wisdom. Okay. Because wisdom don't come from knowledge. Mm -hmm. It comes from wisdom, from knowledge first, mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Now comes the wisdom. Right, where you but can apply. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You surround your people by, around people who have true wisdom. Okay, and that's, and you see we're getting ahead of ourselves with some of those benefits of church membership because we are getting impartation from people who are like-minded, living the same types of lifestyles that we have. So, Bob, I'm actually, there's a scripture I would like for you to read, and it's Matthew 16th chapter and the 18th verse. If you can uh, read that, Matthew 16th chapter... Uh, is that on yours? No, ma'am. No, it's not. I'm so sorry, my dear. Let me read it. And I'm, I'm saying this because I, uh, when we did a little bit of adding to this, I added this this morning and I didn't put it on yours. Now I say unto, say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, 
And upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. It's the scripture that says, uh, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, let's get this straight because we've already learned from the impartation that's been given by our pastors and our overseers mm -hmm. that the uh, church wasn't built upon Peter. Mm -mm. Peter's name meant rock. rock. And what Jesus was telling him, hey, Peter, your name means rock, but upon this rock, mm -hmm. upon your revelation of who I am and what mm -hmm. I did, mm -hmm. I'm going to build my church, mm -hmm. and the gates of hell will not, will not prevail against it. So we know in this day and age, even though there's been somewhat of a falling away from mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. and we've seen from articles that church membership is declining, and there's been a fall in the way and there might be a take it or leave it attitude. Church may not be the central focus of family and central life. It may not be the place for community gathering. But what did God say in his word upon me, upon the revelation of who I am and what I've done? Mm -hmm. I will build my church. Mm -hmm. So that means that, you know, churches are going to go through cycles. Mm -hmm. They're going to go through cycles. People are going to come. People are going to go. And you're usually going to have your group that stays with you. Mm -hmm. But it's our job to understand and relay that upon the rock of revelation of what Christ did for us. The, the gates of hell is not going to prevail against the church. So if there's a church out there and it's looking bleak, there's been some churches that have to close their doors, you know. Uh, some churches had to close their doors. But what we have to understand that there is a remnant. And there are those, especially here, we wave the banner at Believers Family Worship Center. Mm -hmm. and, and the church is still going to prevail. We're still going to do that. So it doesn't matter what comes. The church is going to be relevant. So one of the first things we're going to start talking about in this section, we're going to talk about those benefits of church membership. And one of the first benefits we have is friendship. And what can you talk about friendship? And we're not getting deep. We're not getting spiritual. We're just going to talk about by being in a member that takes part in a church of friendship. Well, I mean, you have to think about this. Uh, you don't open up to everybody and anybody. Mm -hmm. So when you go to church, uh, the church, it's something about the church. It's going to open you up. Mm -hmm. It's going to expose you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to expose you, not, not to expose you in a condemning, to, in, condemning yeah, way. In, right. in that way. It's just to bring, for God to remove some things that are not good or not correct. Right. To make it better for you. Mm -hmm. And then you got to think about this. The church had, is, is a place that you come to be restored. Right. To take where you can go and bring your issues, pray before God. And then have someone that can help you work your way through it. Right. Somebody of like-minded faith. Someone of like-minded belief. Someone that you can... And some of the uh, uh, closest relationships we've had has been with people that we have. And, and, and you know, where there's a, a difference to where uh, different people share different beliefs. Di people share different values. Normally, and it's usual when... Uh, families and individuals gather at whatever particular church they're in is because they're of the same belief. They have the same values. Yeah. So uh, we're all under construction. The mm -hmm. church is far from imperfect. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about what Christ By did four. for the church when he took a, a body mm -hmm. and he said, I'm going to present it to myself and it's going to be without spot or uh, 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 blemish. But we have to understand that we have of friendships that some of the dearest friends that we have are members of the church and just like you have those friendships and sometimes some of those people may leave and go to another place it hurts you to your heart mm -hmm. because not just why the person left because God may have led the person to go and we hope God led the person to go but you lose that camaraderie you lose that friendship but one of the benefits we have uh, of church membership is friendship. And how that friendship is built up is, think about this. Mm -hmm. Every year we have graduation. Yes. Every year somebody, young child or something gets married. Yes. Uh, some, someone loses someone. Yes. Uh, someone gets sick. Exactly. Uh, someone goes through a financial situation. Exactly. And to have brothers and sisters to sit there and come together and a pray friend. with you. Yes. And support you through it. Exactly. Knowing that, you know, and they know that they can call upon you, but they have a place and a person that they have established friendship in the house. So that builds 
really an ex uh, extended family. Right, and that's the key scripture from Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. When you break that together, it says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together uh, as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And that's one of the key points of membership. You don't have to be a person who is a pastor, who is a singer, who's a pianist, who's a drummer, who's a guitarist, but we would welcome you. <laughs> you. You don't have to be an usher. We want everyone to understand how vital and important a member is because we are to exhort one another, to bring each other. You know what? There are some people that have the gift of just a smile. You know, there are some of those people, I, I, you know, I can just point them out in my head. You know, Sister Anna, she kind of sits in that section right there, and she'll nod and she'll wink and smile. She'll hand that little mint over. You have Brother Wilts in the back. Quiet, calm strength. Sometimes you just need that firm hand on the shoulder, and that person is not running their mouth saying a thing. But just by that person putting their hand on my shoulder, you know, a Sister Donna, that love, that exuberance that comes from her. And I'm not just trying to pick out certain people, but they may not be in ministry to where they may be the singer, the preacher, or, uh, or an usher or something. But what they bring to me is just so vital. That smile, knowing that Sister Anna's going to slip that little candy on the side. That just hug and exuberance from Sister Donna. Uh, Brother Wilts with that strong steady strength of just knowing that he's there he's not a person that just runs his mouth he's not a man of many words but we draw from each other and that's one thing that we get but from think membership. about it mm -hmm. how did that all become established unless you spend some time together assemble you assemble and fellowship together exactly we because can draw from each other i can sit right here mm -hmm. and watch that door mm -hmm. And if I fellowship long enough with you and I get to know you, mm -hmm. it's called discernment. Mm -hmm. I can tell or someone can tell yes. if you're not yourself. Exactly. It's something wrong. It doesn't mean we want to ask what's wrong, but exactly. a, a touch on the shoulder. Right. Hey, it's going to be all right. Right. Or we, are, we, we discern and because we know each other, we can go in prayer for whatever that situation is. Yeah. Not to out that person or That's not right. to uh, condemn that person. Maybe we can just pull that person on the side and say, look, I'm praying for you. Or sending that person the text. So it's important that we have that. Another uh, benefit of church membership is we have the opportunity to make a difference. We do, mm -hmm. because in the Great Commission, it says that uh, uh, we're to go. We're to go out there and, 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 and preach the gospel. We have to make a difference in people's lives. And I'll tell you what, it takes people, it takes members to make a difference. So right now, why don't you come on and pray with us? Come and pray. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come and receive him as your healer. Receive him as your God. Receive him as your provider. That's why we're here. Don't matter how long you've been this way Hallelujah. or if it's something suddenly that just, it's Hallelujah. irrelevant to God. Irrelevant. So why don't you come on and pray? Just say, God, I realize that I am a sinner. I ask you, come into my heart. Forgive me of every sin. I believe in my heart, confess with my mouth that God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And because I believe, I receive salvation right now in Jesus' name. Right now, if you prayed that prayer with us, we want you to know that you're saved. And we want you to know, no matter what sickness, no matter what report, no matter what pain, no matter what trauma, it is irrelevant. God heals all. He heals all manner of sickness and disease. Jesus, I love it in Acts 10, 38, he went about doing good, healing all of those, all that were oppressed by the enemy because you know why? Because God is with him. With him.
God is with us tonight, and we want you to know. We want you to, Bishop, would you pray for somebody tonight? There may be many somebodies tonight that needs healing, needs a restoration in their body. Would you go ahead and pray, sir, You for know, sometimes we, we let little pains and little things affect us, and we think God's not concerned about that. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about every area, every of, your, area. Every area of your life. Uh -huh. I don't care, look, I don't care if it's your little finger. He's concerned about that. Uh -huh. He's concerned about your foot. Uh -huh. He's concerned about your leg. Yes. He's concerned about your knee. He's concerned about your neck, uh -huh. your, your head, uh -huh. your feet. It doesn't uh -huh. matter. Uh -huh. God is concerned about the wholeness the whole of you. Man. Yes. God wants you whole and healed. He wants you Are well. you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. He wants you well. Yes. Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, we come right now and we thank you, Father. We speak to every situation in, in our bodies today. And we call them whole yes. by the word of God because yes. you have called healing to come forth to your children, yes. to your people, yes. to your people, yes. to mankind. Yes. You want us whole. You want us to be joyful mm -hmm. so that we can bless you and say what a mighty God we serve. <laughs> we yes. thank you for that, Lord, yes. that you're touching lives yes. right now. Right now. And we will not back up. We're not, we're not, we're not shame. No. We're not backing up. No. We're, we're not timid about no. what we say. Because your word says that you set your word to heal us and deliver us of all of our destruction. All. Yes. And we thank you and we bless you that it's happening even right, right now, now. Because we said it. We're not healing anybody. God is healing you. you. God. God is touching you by his word. And the power of his word and the faith that's in his word is moving now in your life. Receive it. Yes. Trust God. Yes. Listen to me. You are important to God. God's trying to give you a testimony to let others know that nothing's too hard for God. Hard for God. If he did it for you, he'll do it for me. Yes. Tell somebody that. If he did it for you, he'll do it for me. If he did it in the word, if he did it in the word, he'll do it for he'll me. do it for me. Amen. We thank the Lord for that. We thank Bishop for releasing that healing anointing. Faith for healing tonight. Amen and amen. And I tell you what, if you said that prayer and if you confessed with your mouth and you believe in your heart, and that's what that Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, you've been saved. And just like there's open enrollment at your work and your job, usually there's one time a year where you can go and add in benefits or take away benefits. In the body of Christ, it's 24-7, 365. So if you said that prayer, the enrollment is open. And, and if you said that you've been saved, and what does our bishop say? If there's one person that has given their life to Christ, there's a party going on in heaven. And if you need to connect yourself with the church, you've landed yourself in a great one. If you go to believersfamily.org or you go to our Facebook page, you send us a message, you leave some information there, we will reach out to you. Come to our church services. We're located in New Iberia, Louisiana. Our church services are at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We love to have you. We love to help mature you to become everything that God will have you to be. So we'd like to thank you all for that time of study. And at this time, what we're going to do, uh, we're, it's our giving time. Because when we come, we not only come to praise and worship of the word, but we give as well because we have been directed to give. So, Bobby, if you can go ahead and uh, uh, lead us into that uh, portion of the service right here to where we do our offering. Okay. All right, we have uh, four different ways of giving. Uh, and that's online, believersfamily.org, and select Connect to Give. We have Cash App, dollar sign BFWC 1604. Say that again. Cash App. Cash App, dollar sign BFWC 1604. We have Text, BFWC Gave, BFWC GIVE 228748. I'm going to say that again. BFWC G I V E 2 2 number 2 8748. Mail PO Box 10306 New Iberry, Louisiana 70560. Now, how you spell million? 
M I L L I O N S. Thousand. T O U S A D S. Hundreds. H U N D R A D S. Now let's start with our seed in our hand for our offering confession. Leader, the Lord give the seed to the sower. Thank you for the seed. Bread to the eater. Thank you for the bread. You multiply our seed sowing. Thank you for multiplication. Okay, we are the head, and not, not the, the tail. tail. We, we live, live above, above only, and not beneath. beneath. We are the lender, and not the borrower. And, and everything we put our hands to shall, shall prosper. prosper. Now, find three people in your house. Okay. And, and tell them. And the three people, let's get it right. Okay. The three people. It can be three people, but you and your wife is as one. So you can't count them. <laughs> okay. You can only say it one time. Okay. okay? What are we going to say? All right. What we're going to say is. Receive a hundredfold. 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 So you see. That's three. I'm missing one. Okay. There's another one back there. So Receive we're gonna, a hundredfold. We're, we're going to say it to the Holy Ghost. Receive a hundredfold. That's oh, our yeah. third person. <laughs> Since we only have two of us. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. So here we go. This is the best part that I like. Okay. Because it really, truly blesses us. Mm -hmm. I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. All my needs, All are, my met. needs are met. I have plenty more. I have plenty more. To see it in see store. It in store. I, buy I buy lack, poverty, and, and insufficiency. insufficiency. And I lose the, the supernatural, supernatural abundance of God in, in my, my life now. now. The, the supernatural, supernatural abundance of God in my life now. now. The supernatural abundance of God in my life now. So we'd like to thank everyone for that giving time. And just before we close, we have a few announcements. We've already given our church schedule. And we're just reminding those, especially those who are members of Believers Family Worship Center, if you can reach out to Elder Deb or myself, there is a serving opportunity. If you're a member and you want to put your hands to work on the fourth Wednesdays of every month, BFWC is assigned at uh, uh, St. Francis Diner in New Iberia, Louisiana from 11 a.m. to 12.30 to serve. We need some volunteers this we the Wednesday, and it's going to be Wednesday the 26th of July. Please reach out to her for that. Uh, and we just like to thank you all and uh, for, for joining us for this midweek service. As we said, we have service on Sundays at 10. You can join us weekly for prayer. And once again, we are Believers Family Worship Center. We are celebrating 38 years strong in ministry. I don't know how many out there churches that have lasted that long. We are celebrating 34 uh, years in ministry. Come and join us. We be happy, happy, happy to have you. And at this time, we're going to close our service. And I'm going to ask Bobby if he can just lead us in our blessing. Okay, here we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up your countenance upon you and give you his peace. May his righteousness go before you and his glory be your real God. And it is in the name of Jesus that we say, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 Good night and God bless you. God bless.